Hello, all my art-loving people out there. So I know we have brand new watercolors, the Isaro ones we still need to get to, plus a lot of other fun things that you've seen on my channel that I haven't gotten to yet. But there is something in my studio that is really stressing me out and we need to address it in today's video. Hi, I'm Miranda and on this channel we do all kinds of fun watercolor stuff and sometimes we get distracted by other fun art supplies. And today, that other fun art supply is gouache. The thing stressing me out is gouache. Why is gouache stressing me out? Well, it's because I know that my gouache palette has mold in it. And I've been ignoring it for a couple of weeks, probably months actually. And it's time we take care of that and in today's video, I also have a bunch of new gouache goodies to show you, plus a couple of other fun things that are watercolor related that you are not going to want to miss. This here is the little gouache palette that has the mold in it. It's very sad. Anyway, while we have this palette out and we're dealing with gouache, I thought we should probably do some maintenance on this guy because it was supposed to be a monthly reminder in my phone to come up and ding, take care of gouache, like add water to it, stir it, that kind of thing. But I think that reminder must have gotten erased somehow, so I'm going to take care of this palette also today and put that reminder back in my phone. Okay, let's take a look and see what kind of mess we have. I'm a little bit worried. Okay, so this is the easy one. Let's take a look at this one first because the other one is kind of scary. And if you hear noise in the background, Jack is trying to play with one of my cats. Daisy, it looks like. <laughs> That's funny. They're very cute. What do we have? Da 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 da. All oh, things look very dry. Yeah, they are very dry, but not, well, I shouldn't say very dry. They are a little dry, some more than others. Like these are very dry, these are not. I think I have distilled water out in my truck because I put it in my antifreeze when I mix that together. So, so I will go get that and we'll stir these up. Well, we'll let it sit and then stir them and all of that. We'll do that first and then we'll open this scary palette. Well, if I would have even thought about that for half a second, I would have known, but I found my distilled water. Can you hear that? <laughs> Let me uh, find something hard that is not my poor little hand. Yeah, it's very, very cold in Colorado right now. So my distilled water needs to sit out in the house for a while before we can use it. So I guess we'll open the scary palette first. In case you're wondering, the reason I don't wanna use my tap water is because my tap water here is very sulfuric. We're around a lot of coal mines and it's just not great. So if I were to put that in here, I have put it in here. I have used it in here before without this molding, but I just, I don't really wanna do that. And it kind of has a little bit of an orange tint to it. So I'm gonna wait for my distilled water. All right, lid back on that for now because I imagine we're not gonna get any water out of that gallon jug for a day. <laughs> Probably take a day to thaw. Okay, now this thing, oh, I'm so scared. Hey, it doesn't look too bad on the bottom. <laughs> oh dear, here goes. So is there is that mold on the top? I think it's a little tiny bit of mold on the lid. Probably should have gloves on, but I'll just be careful and wash really well. Oh, it's not nearly as bad as I thought. <laughs> so I do have some in between here that I'll have to, I'll grab a toothbrush that I can just dispose of afterwards and get in these cracks. So the only, well, the only, the ones with mold on them are the Imgram Ivory Black, the white. So the, both of these were the Imgram Titanium White and the Holbein Carmine, which is interesting because the Holbeins, I didn't think, last time I opened this with the mold and stuff, the Holbeins were not molded. Curious if some of the white or whatever got over on that or if the Carmine will mold in the future. Okay, well this is way less bad than I suspected it was going to be. Some of them are getting pretty dry, so we'll want to add some distilled water to those too and probably stir them around. So I need like a popsicle stick or something to get in there and get that. Maybe I'll use a palette knife because they're metal and I can clean the mold off of those pretty easily. So look on that black. The mold goes clear down to that edge because there was some air space in that corner. So probably have to dig out all of the black. 
And I wonder if these molded because I sprayed them initially with a mixture of my tap water mixed with a drop of clove oil. And clove oil should have obliterated mold from starting in the first place, but obviously it didn't work in this case. So my tap water is either that bad or clove oil doesn't work like it's supposed to. <laughs> One or the other or both or the paint's just inclined to do that anyway. So I don't want to lose black and white, especially white, although I did buy a huge thing of Da Vinci white. Maybe I'll do that. I'll pull these M grams out and I'll fill it with that tube of Da Vinci white that I have and try that. But as far as the black, boy, I don't know. Maybe I can use the Holbein black if I have one. I don't want to put M. Graham back in there because if it's just going to mold, that's not going to work. All right, let me dig this out and ugh, go from there. I am going to ask you guys if you could put in the comments without criticizing what I'm doing. Please don't criticize in the comments. It actually hurts my feelings and thank you to the majority of you who don't criticize things that I'm doing. I really, really appreciate you guys. It's just those few little negative comments, they actually really affect me a lot, I noticed, and it's been hard lately. As the channel grows, I get more critical comments and it's hard to ignore them. Anyway, if you have ideas on how to avoid mold, besides just using the paint from the tube, which we all know we can do, please leave that in the comments below. It'd be really helpful. I've got this all cleaned up and I have these little bottles of alcohol that I bring in for my intermediate watercolor students to play with sometimes, little spray bottles. And I don't remember if this is 90% alcohol or 70% because I have both in the house. But anyway, I was thinking I would take this alcohol and spray this and I don't mind if it mists over onto that because there's little corners and stuff in here that, you know, can't always get into. I did my best, okay. It should help. Set that aside. I'm going to spray the lid with alcohol and then kind of wipe it off. Let me let that sit for a minute actually. Then I thought I would use a Q-tip. I'm not going to pull all this paint out yet. I still see a little bit in the white, but what I was thinking is that I would paint with it today because I have some goodies to show you that I want to play with. Paint with this today so I'm not wasting all of this delicious paint because some of it's still fine, right? Anyway, paint with it today using the new goodies and then see what we want to do with it. But there are some areas that definitely need cleaned up. Now that that alcohol sat on that lid for a minute, we'll clean that up. And then I need some alcohol on this little cotton bud. Okay, that's pretty well soaked. And I'll go along the rims and I don't care if it drips down into the wells, but I think just getting some of these edges cleaned up will help. All right, I gotta go clean my fingers up and wash thoroughly. Shut the lid for now, just like so. So let me show you the fun things that we're going to use today to go along with this palette. I received some stuff as birthday gifts from my Patreon supporters who are so, so sweet. They didn't have to do that, but boy, does it give me warm fuzzies. <laughs> So the first thing is this Art of Soil little watercolor palette. It's so cute and these do keep falling out. <laughs> so I'll have to tack those back in with some something. So these are made with soil somehow and it says that's it, no surprises. I will have to go online and look up more on these. This just stuck to the lid of the box right there. We have a Shenhan Lavender, American Journey Quinacridone Burnt Orange, a Mission Gold Cobalt Black, and then a Burnt Sienna from Da Vinci. So I have never tried Shenhan or American Journey paint, so that will be fun. And this particular gift giver often gives me some of her extra goodies, which is great because I am going to put together a palette, an extra palette for my students. I have a lot of students show up the first class without their supplies because they are running late or they signed up really last minute. 
So that's been really useful and she knows that I do that for my students and it's it's great. And a lot of it I just play with myself because that's how she intends it as well. So thank you. The next thing is going to be a little more applicable to today's topic, which will be gouache. Ta-da! <laughs> so this is the Sarah Burns gouache brushes. And I actually went to buy these last year because I don't really have dedicated gouache brushes. I have a lot of watercolor brushes, but in my opinion, the watercolor brushes for me and my painting style are too soft for me to use comfortably with gouache. So yes, while I have a hundred thousand, okay, it feels like it. So while I have a lot of watercolor brushes, I don't really have any that were for gouache. And I thought, oh, how fun it would be to have Sarah Burns's brushes, even though you can get brushes anywhere. But they were sold out and then they got sent to me for Christmas birthday. So that was, <laughs> that was amazing, you guys. When I opened this, my jaw just dropped and I just couldn't believe it. So thank you. Oh, I just can't even tell you thank you. And they look absolutely delightful. So I do like the color that Sarah chose for her handles. And when I get the glue out of them, yeah, see, they're, they're just ever so slightly stiffer than watercolor brushes. So I think that'll be perfect. So we have the three quarter flat, half inch flat, a big round, that's a size 12, although it's a tiny size 12 if you were to compare it to watercolors, it'd be more like between an eight and a 10, probably a 10. A three eighths flat, a quarter inch. It's not exactly a flat because you can see it has this little cuts out of the end of the brush there, which is kind of cool. Probably for grasses and things like that, which is this cute little thing, size six flat, and then a long rigger here, a size one. We will use these today when we do our little painting with our renewed gouache. Oh, but I am so excited to use these. She also had extras of these. She said she accidentally purchased two. So I have finally the Schmincke Random Gray. And I say finally only because I've seen people use it for a couple of years now online. And I'm like, oh, that looks kind of fun. And what a good idea from Schmincke to put all their colors, their leftover colors together and just make a gray that they can make money off of. I mean, what a great idea marketing wise. So this will be fun. This is the 2022 version, so the latest one, and I am going to try and make painting with it, but not in today's video. I have enough to do in today's video, but you can look forward to that in the future. Plus, I have the Daniel Smith Buff Titanium. Buff Titanium has quickly become one of my favorite colors in watercolor. Probably will be similar in other mediums too. I'd say this Naples yellow is as close as I have in gouache currently. And then I told you guys, because I was on my no buy, the two things that would make me sad not to try out this year would be the Daniel Smith gouache and the Michael Harding watercolors. And here she gave me a Daniel Smith gouache tube. So that is awesome. And it's in the color Cascade Green. So since it's gouache, we will probably try this out today as well. I can't add it to my palette exactly. Although what a lot of people are doing, I noticed with the white is they're carrying just a tube of white. Pretend this is gouache white. Carrying a tube with their palette and then filling their palette with colors because they like to use the white fresh from the tube. So that's a thought. I could put this green in there, but we'll see. It probably won't be today. I wanna to try and use this up before it all molds out. I also received a Palette Full Packs box in the mail. Now I am not personally subscribed to Palette Full Packs, but my grandma was. And so I am still just receiving the remaining of her subscription, which will be, I believe, two more months after this one. And it came with Create a Color Oil Pencils, a pocket set of them. You can see them there. They actually look quite nice. A Create a Color Mega Pencil Eraser, which is great because it comes in its own little case so your shavings are contained. We have a Peel Off China Marker by Sharpie. I do have another one of these and I have one I think in red and black as well from previous boxes. Another Plastic Eraser by Tombow. February Valentine's Day sticker. Actually, that's a good reminder. I totally forgot February's Valentine's month, so hmm. <laughs> Gotta remember that. Oh, I didn't even see this in here. Oh, a Derwent drawing pencil in yellow ochre. Those are nice. Well, so I've seen on YouTube. I have not tried them myself. And the Stonehenge colors. So it says five neutral colors to choose from. Natural fawn, cream, pearl gray, and warm white. So let's take a look at those. Got some shadows going here, but hopefully you can see the 
different colors. And what does it feel like? Very smooth. And some have more texture than others in different colors, so that's interesting. 100% cotton, acid-free paper. So I'm probably not going to do anything with these palette full pack supplies currently, except for adding them to my inventory and putting them on the list of things to get to sometime in the future, because pencils don't excite me nearly as much as other art supplies, if you know what I mean. So yes, I'll put these over here to the side so that I don't put them in the drawer without adding them to my inventory first. And then they'll go in the appropriate drawers here in my studio for looking at later. That's why I'm glad that I stopped subscribing to subscription boxes because it just gets to be too much, too many supplies that I just can't handle in my brain. I think I've showed you everything that I've gotten new recently and now we can concentrate back on fun gouache things. Alrighty, it's probably only been an hour since I brought this in from the truck, but we do have some flow going, even though it's very cold <laughs> because it's still encased in an ice cube. Oh, that one's stuck. So what I was thinking is I could at least pour some water in here and get some of these going, but this is, oh look, you see the ice in there? Can you guys see that? Give me some light on the subject. There's the shiny ice. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, well this could be kind of difficult actually. I don't really know how much water to put in them, but and some of these are more empty than others because I actually brought them in and shared them with my intermediate watercolor students to kind of just try something new and different. So I was grateful to have a paint set with such a large selection. Well, that is probably way too much in some wells and not enough in another, but that was kind of hard to be precise about. And it's not that big of a deal because guess what? It's going to evaporate eventually anyway. So <laughs> there is that. <laughs> so I'm not even gonna try and stir these right now. I'm just gonna put the lid back on and let them sit for the rest of the day. Okay, let's do a painting with this. This should be fun. I don't know what to paint though. Hmm. To think about that a minute. I thought long and hard about making my own little drawing and painting that with gouache today, but I cannot tell you how excited I am to pull this book back out. This is the Sakuums Coloring Book 2018 version, and I have not painted in here in a long time. I think that was with Windsor and Newton paints. This one's not even completed, and that is with unknown. I didn't mark it. <laughs> this I did while traveling and it's not quite done either and that was with the pretty excellent watercolors and the latest date in here is February of 2020. So it has been a long time since I have painted in here. Here's another one. Oh I was wrong. Here we go. March of 21 with Himimiya watercolors. <laughs> that one's actually complete. I like that. So I am really excited to paint in this. This is on watercolor paper, all of these drawings, which is awesome. It is cellulose watercolor paper, however, so I think it'll be perfect for gouache. Wow, there's so many good choices here. I'm not even sure which one to choose, but I am excited to do it. So this is the one that I'm going to do. I like this one because it has some flowers and some greenery and a person, and it just seems like a good mix for gouache today, and we get to try out, because of all the little spaces, and the big spaces, we'll get to try out every single brush in this set. So I will take these all to the sink, and wash all the stiffness out of them, and I bet you these brushes have such a nice variety of sizes that we'll be able to do everything we need with just this brush set. And don't worry, this time lapse slows way down. I just had my camera settings wrong, so be patient with me for just a second. It gets better. It has been several hours, so I thought we should check on this. So it's been, boy, Seven or seven or eight hours. Let's see what this looks like. Interesting. Yeah, it's much softer now. Just dip my finger in the green. Well, it's not all roses here, but I think with a concentrated effort, we can get this all revived. It's just going to take a lot of time, patience, and <laughs> a little more delicacy than I have because I just splooshed the brown on my painting over here. Oops. <laughs> uh, okay, I stirred them all up. They look pretty good and I'll let them sit and do the same tomorrow. 
it's the next morning so let's take a look at these and see what we ended up with I think they're gonna be great they look pretty juicy <laughs> that is awesome so the dark brown still had some chunks in it yesterday the that one and this one also so let's see oh it feels absolutely perfect no hard chunks at all I think we successfully revived this paint which is great so this is what I have so far. The reason the time-lapse that I showed you earlier was so quick is because I've never done time-lapse on this camera before and apparently I've been getting the settings a little wrong. I'm going to just record this in real time now and speed it up in editing so you don't miss so much. But here's the thing. When I dropped the brown on this last night, I really like the dark background. So that's something I'm probably going to do in the future for some of these is do the background dark. And I don't like the flower being like watercolory like. I think I'm going to make this gouache page more solid, more like a oh an illustrative kind of thing. And I think that'll be really fun. So let's just get started with it. I think you can see in this time lapse how beautifully this paint lays down. And in case you weren't around back when I created this palette or you need to refresh your memory, this is a mixture of three different brands. 10 of the 16 wells are whole bind gouache, which was a very generous gift from one of you. Thank you so much again. I love this paint. And then there are one, two, three, four, five that are M. Graham and one Windsor and Newton. And the Naples yellow that you see just above the black is the Windsor and Newton Naples yellow. It's really neat. Um, so they have an M. Graham cobalt blue, M. Graham azo yellow, the titanium white. So both the white wells are M. Graham and the ivory Black is M. Graham, which we've kind of talked about with the mold situation already anyway, but you kind of get the point. Anyway, these brushes, first of all, are awesome. I absolutely love them, and I kind of do mention that again at the end of the video. The sizes, the variety of sizes, I should say, are absolutely perfect for pretty much anything I wanted to do on this page. I did not use the tiny rigger, so I think that was the only one, and maybe... Nope, I think I used the big round as well. So it's just the long rigger brush that I did not use. However, I am sure that I will have a use for it in the future because this just reminded me how much I love to paint with gouache, how fun it is and how nice it will be to use in those sketchbooks that aren't really great for watercolor. This is going to be a perfect choice for those sketchbooks and it's gonna be fun to fill them up with this delicious paint. It is so nice. I would love to hear in the comments below what your favorite brand of gouache is and have you tried the Daniel Smith gouache and what do you guys think of that so far? Okay, all done. Let's try out this Cascade Green real quick. I'm dying to see what it looks like. Oh, that came out quickly. I hate squishing tubes on when they pour out the top like that. <laughs> so all the backs of these are just blank watercolor paper, so I think. It would be fun to paint pictures on them at some point. I have a stray brush hair there. Okay, let's see what this cascade green is like. I'm trying to think if we could paint something, but I'm not sure I'm on top of it enough right now to pull something out of my head like that. I could paint the beginning of like a watermelon or something and come back later some other day and finish it. Wow, that's really pretty. Well, there's your cascade green. Beautiful. I like it a lot. <laughs> the back side of this paper is drying super quickly. <laughs> I can't quite get the curve on that watermelon I was looking for, but here, I'm gonna grab a little bit more, more water. Ooh. That was too much water. Now I've got 
more than I bargained for here. Trying to chase it <laughs> on paper that's drying like instantly. Ah, good enough. You can see the beautiful color that is. I'm just gonna keep this as is. I guess I'll keep taking the uh, mold out of it until it's gone because I can pull it off and just keep using it. I know some of you will disagree with that decision, but that's okay. So there's probably more shading and stuff I could do. Like that flower could probably use some highlights or something fun like that. Like every time I put something on here, I don't like the way it looks, so then I wanna take it off, but that looks okay. That, ah, see, that one needs to be curved. There we go, that did help. Okay, so I haven't put this back on since we cleaned it off, but I'm going to take this alcohol. That's pretty empty, Let's see if there's enough left. I'm going to spray it in here, even though I don't know about that. It evaporates. Spray it on this one more time and then put this on here and shut it up. <laughs> and the way things are going, I won't have time to pull this out again until my calendar reminder goes off in one month. So we'll take a look at it again in a month and see what we've got going then. Should be interesting. Well, that is gouache in a nutshell. If these brushes become available again, and they may be right now, I'm not sure, I haven't gone on and looked because I'm on a no buy and it didn't matter. <laughs> I highly recommend them. I really like that they're such short handles too. They work so beautifully. I encourage you guys to find something that's stressing you out in your studio and just take care of it. It will ease your mind more than you know. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. If you're new, consider subscribing if you like watercolor and these kinds of videos. There's lots of them on my channel you can check out before you make your decision. And hit the like button if you found something fun in today's video. Really appreciate it. Helps my channel out. All right, guys. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. That I haven't gotten to you. Huh, kitty? She agrees. So I will go get some. And <laughs> Jack. So I will go grab that. Hey, I'm trying to video here, doofus. <laughs> I wish I had a better zoom lens. Darn it. Coyote! It's huge for a yodi. It's like German Shepherd size. Now I spooked it. <laughs> Doesn't like me getting closer. <laughs>